I'm not that well versed on David Pierce and his abolitionist project, um, but I'm quite familiar with the general idea and the thrust behind uh, philosophies of this nature. I don't think it's anything new. Um, if you look, for example, at um, India today, Hindu society, if you would really call these people members of society, there's a bunch of people called sadhus, um, although they come under various other names. They're ascetics, and a lot of them are phony, perhaps the overwhelming majority, but some of them at least are attempting to conquer their bodies. So they go through these various ascetic practices in order to divorce themselves from all the negative sensations in the outside world. They want to conquer things like pain, hunger, um, just the normal annoyances of everyday existence. I've imagined that myself and I can see how you can get used to being extremely hungry all the time and learn to deal with existence on very little and very unappetizing food. I th I'm quite sure I c you can do that. I've attempted that myself and it does, doesn't does seem impossible. Uh, immunity to pain, well I already, I already have a very high tolerance for pain and it seems to be getting more marked as I get older. Uh, although that might be a pathological condition because it, they do say that it's a hallmark of the depressive or the recovered depressive is you have a reduced ability to feel pain. Um, things like shunning human society, uh, shunning all the good things in life, or not necessarily shunning them, but perhaps turning them on their heads to turn them into the reverse of what they are, not as an end in itself, not for masochistic purposes, but to inure oneself to the possibility of the state of pain or deprivation that comes with these states. Um, asceticism, uh, that, that's been with us I don't know, as long as we've understood that human society exists, I think. Um, and it's often abused, it's often used for reasons other than simple adaptation or um, pain reduction, suffering reduction, but it, it is used for that purpose occasionally. And I think that it's effective, or at least it looks to me as though it would be, so that's kind of you know, an abolitionist kind of idea is to become an ascetic and conquer your body and make sure that there are no more stimuli that affect you. Now, I don't know if this is actually possible. I've obviously never gotten to that point. If I have a hangnail, I'm likely to do something about it. But I can see how, in theory, it's at least possible for a human being to do that because I think you can get used to just about anything. I remember reading a book on the Blitz in London, and this was the first sustained attack on a modern city in you know the context of modern warfare. The people in London who bore the brunt of it and sat there night after night getting bombed said one of the strangest, weirdest things about it all was the fact that you got used to it. It was uh, something that was just going to happen, and well, Let's get this over with. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's possible that you can get used to anything. Um, that you can conquer any kind of suffering. I won't say that it's easy, um, or that many people manage to do so, but I suppose it's theoretically possible. Um, conquering suffering, okay, we abolish suffering. Now, the objection that I always raise in my own mind to these uh, ascetics in India and to various other people who attempt something along those lines is, okay, now what? Let's say that you've silenced your body, as it were. Your body is no longer sending you controlling impulses. You are in control of it. Um, you're telling your central nervous system, obey my will, even if it is my will to thrust one of my limbs into a fire and leave it there. Let's say that your, your ability to, uh, I won't say withstand pain, but overcome pain is such that you can do that. Uh, I think that human beings 
adapt that way normally throughout their lives anyway. Um, for example, older people have all kinds of aches and pains that would cripple, uh, say, a five-year-old. But they, the old people just sort of say, well, that's just life because, you know, they've been dealing with this for so long that it's not such a big deal. So I can see if you deliberately accelerate that tendency, uh, you can, I guess, in theory, uh, put an end to it once and for all, to the actual negative experience of pain. You may still be experiencing pain, but you've gotten yourself into a place in here where it's not really breaking through to who you are. Uh, if you devote all your energy to that all the time, the way that, say, an ascetic would, a sadhu would, or uh, you know, a wandering mendicant of any sort of tradition or whatever, you know, people wearing hair shirts, flagellants, all this kind of thing. And I would say, okay, now that you've done this, now that you've abolished suffering, now that you've abolished any kind of negative sensory input, okay, what have you accomplished? I would say you, the, not a lot. Um, and it seems to be an, an enormous amount of energy to to push towards um, something so, I guess, dead-endish, if you ask me, the abolition of suffering. So you, you've abolished suffering, now what? Now, it's easy for somebody who is plagued or beleaguered by suffering to see this as a sort of blissful state, but I can imagine that. When I was in my severe depression a quarter of a century ago, I told my doctor, I said, look, if you had to amputate my legs, I would do that if you would, if that, that would take away the depression. And without hesitation, I would do it. Um, now I can't imagine it ever having gotten that bad that I was willing to do it, but I take my, my own word for it from 25 years ago that I was sincere when I said that. But when you're beleaguered by suffering, all you can imagine is its ending. But once you do something, once suffering becomes manageable, which it became for me, inevitably, and in my case this is precisely what happened, uh, you, you think, okay, now what? <laughs> okay, I've thought that the abolition of suffering was so important to me for so long, but a couple of years into my recovery, and I'm thinking, okay, I, I thought I was going to be in some sort of paradise bliss, and for a while it was, but now what? And it's not as though the blissfulness has lost its edge. It's not as though I'm getting sort of um, bored with bliss. No, it's not that at all. Uh, or at that time, that's how I felt. It was that, okay, now that I'm here, what's on the next level up? And this is, I suppose, again, what I would object to with the sadhu, the, the, the ascetic, as well as with the abolitionist project. And, w and that, that's not really an objection per se, because many of these ascetics throughout the ages, and sadhus or whatever, um, mendicants, would say, yeah, that's just the beginning. Silencing the external is just the beginning. That's just the, you're just making the bed in order to sleep in it. You haven't even laid down on it. You've just made the bed. That I can understand. I can see abolitionism of the David Pierce type setting the stage for something else, for further potential growth or further potential development whose impetus has nothing to do with pain avoidance. Um, but when you're beleaguered by pain, I think that that's all you can imagine is pain avoidance. Uh, in my case, that's what it was, pain abolition, suffering abolition. But once you do get there, it does strike me as almost inevitable that you're going to say, okay, now what? Um, I guess the classic work of abolitionist uh, satire, which, you know, it gets mentioned all the time in that uh, discussion, is Brave New World, and there's elements of that in the book. Uh, Helen Holtz Watson says, okay, I'm perfect. Now what? I want more than this. There's more to us. Um, Nietzsche, I guess, says we have the will to power. Uh, I say curiosity is at least as powerful a motivating factor as pain avoidance or pleasure seeking, pleasure searching or whatever. 
um, curiosity has an absolutely gigantic, powerful hold on me. Um, how do we deal with that? And I think that a lot of the things that we that we would sort of pursue if we were to sort of put abolitionism uh, front and center of our thinking might hamper our ability to deal with those things. That's all. It just seems to be a very um, over-specialized uh, search field of study, the abolitionist project. Um, I don't have an, have an objection to it per se. It seems like a very good idea. But... Um, it is based on some fairly dogmatic assumptions and it doesn't really address a great deal of other things that we might say are central to being human but I really, really, really like the discussion and I'm glad you raised it, thanks